Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K, the YouTube channel, and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, and we generally talk a lot of rubbish about tabletop games in the modern era. Today, we're going to be looking at an ancient game that's been reprinted a few times, currently being reprinted in its fourth edition, and we're going to be looking at the game about German elections called Die Macher. And in this game, what you'll be doing You'll be playing it over the course of five to seven rounds and uh, what you'll be trying to do, you'll be trying to influence the way that five to seven elections play out in the current and in the future. And what you'll be doing, you'll be trying to increase your party membership. You'll be trying to increase the amount of meetings that your party get. You'll be trying to increase the popularity and trends of your party and you'll be trying to match your party platform with both the state public opinion and the national public opinion and you'll be trying to control the media to try and influence voters into vote for your party so, so in this video we'll be giving you a very very brief overview of the rules because this game has got a reputation for being a real complex beast right so we'll be giving you a very brief overview of the rules we'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll tell you if Dimaka is still worth playing today and in the future so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to our channel Go and have a look at our playthrough of this. We just recently done a full play playthrough of this. Leave a comment in the section down below and we'll see you after this. Board games 4K. So, Demaka, how'd you play it? We're not gonna we're not gonna go into depth about the rules here, we're just gonna give you a very brief overview of the rules because if you want to see how the games play we did a full tutorial before we played this so go and have a look at our play through this and, and that'll explain how to play the game in depth right so, so everyone takes control of one of the five main parties in germany so you've got a christian democrat you've got the green party you've got the leftist party and all, and all that sort of thing so you'll be taking control you get twenty five thousand euros to start with and you get one meeting marker in the relevant space. And the board's divided up into various things. So you've got the exchange board where you're gonna be putting cards where you can exchange public opinion. You've got the organization board where you've got your party membership. You've got some certain victory points if you can manage to control the media in certain elections. And then you've got the national opinion, which is gives you points at the end of the game. So if you look at the main board, you'll see that you've got an area where you've got votes, you've got four different states that are going to be available to influence at any given time, right? And in this game, we'll be talking about a basic game. We're not going to be talking about an advanced, so longer game than seven elections. There's five elections, one of which is very, very short. So if you look at the board, you've got a space for your, for your votes. Then you've got a space for your party meeting markers, and you've got your trends, which goes from negative three to plus three. The main thing about this game is that you'll be trying to match your party platform cards with the state opinion cards and the national opinion cards and the way that you get votes is you take the amount of meeting markers that you've got on a specific state and you'll add together the trend and the amount of policy platform cards that match the state opinion and then you'll, you'll times that by the amount of meeting markers you get and that's how many votes you get in the region and the person with the most votes will win the election and get a certain amount of benefits based on winning that election right so it might be a case that you might be able to swap out some opinion cards and place opinion cards on a national election so this game takes place over a certain amount of rounds and there'll be a certain amount of phases and you, you just go from phase number one all the way down to phase number nine and then you repeat that four times and the fifth election is just another scoring thing right so the first phase is that you will be de determining who goes first or first player what you do is you have a little auction whoever wins decides who's first player right so the second thing you're going to do, be doing is you're going to be performing your party platform conference and this gives you an opportunity to swap cards out from your hand and you're only allowed to have a certain amount of cards in your hand and change your party policy to maybe match either the national opinion or the state opinion and you'll be able to swap them out in this in this phase. So the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking your shadow cabinet actions and everyone's got a hand of identical shadow cabinet cards and on this one you'll be able to play up to four of these shadow cabinet cards and you'll play you can play one in each active state and these shadow cabinet cards have got a cost you'll pay the cost and they range three thousand euros up to twenty five thousand euros and then they'll give you a benefit so you can remove a media marker from one of these spaces on the on, on the state board or you can increase your, your um, party membership, put down state markers, and it allows you to manipulate the elections. And uh, the, the, the thing about this is, is choosing when to play the appropriate shadow cabinet card and, um, and where to play it. So the next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna be forming coalitions. And 
You'll notice that on the shadow cabinet cards, you've got a little telephone icon that allows you to place a coalition marker in that state. And what you'll be doing in this one, you, if you've got a coalition marker in that state you, and you share two party policies with another player, you can ask them to go into coalition with you. And it's up to them whether they choose to accept. And what you do, if you go into coalition, you'll be merging your votes together to, to get a, a more, more chance of winning, but you'll, you'll split the amount of uh, victory benefits. And if you've got three things in common with somebody else, you can force them to go into coalition with it. So that's that's quite a nice little thing. So you can ride on the coattails of somebody else. Right? So next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna be paying 4,000 euros for to buy a media marker. And the player who has the most media markers in, in, a, in each state will get to exchange one public opinion card with a card from the exchange board. And also, they're also immune in that state from the the effects of any published polls which we'll talk about in a bit. So the next thing you're going to be doing you're going to be organizing your pub party meetings and this is this is the way that you get votes. So you'll be paying $1,000 each to put up to four party meeting, meeting markers in each state and you'll just take the cues, pay your money and chuck them in. And like we said they're essential to getting votes like we said earlier. So the next thing you're going to be doing you're going to be putting one poll card in each state and then you'll be auctioning off that poll card blind. So you won't be able to see what it is. But it's always in your interest to try and get control of these poll cards because they, the effects can be quite devastating or lucrative depending on where, where you come. So you, you, what you do, you, you have a little auction, you flip it over and then you'll choose up to two of the criteria at the top if you want to publish a poll. If you don't want to publish a poll, you roll two dice and then you'll get that many party members. And party members give you points at the end of the game, right? The next thing you're going to be doing, you're going to be starting at the last state and you'll be given the option of converting your party meeting markers into votes. And this is a sort of a way, you could, you could choose as many as you want and you'll, you've used the equation that we talked about earlier and that'll give you a certain amount of votes. You'll be able to lock down those votes early before the election takes place. And you work your way around and then you'll come to the active state that you're going to evaluate there and then you'll take all of the party meeting markers off the board and then you'll you'll calculate how many votes you're going to get through the little sum that we talked about earlier. So once you've determined who wins the election then you will score the election and we're almost done here. The first thing you're going to do you're going to be looking at a little card and you'll convert votes to seats and then you'll write that in a little box on a on your score sheet and that also gives you a certain amount of money at the end of the round. So, so votes as equal to seats and income. You, you'll look at who's won the election and if it's a single party, they get to put a media marker on one of the victory scoring spaces. They'll be able to take one of the state public opinion cards and turn it into a national opinion. If there's a coalition, then they both get to put out a media marker and a national one. And if a party wins by a nose, which is sort of a tie, but whoever's on top, then the person who, who lost by a nose only gets to put a public opinion mark on there, I think. Yeah, so, so it's always in your interest to try and either win by coalition or win outright. So then what you do, you increase your party membership if you match your party policy with the national policy, then you get your money and then you'll reset the, the board that you just used if you're playing a five round game. You reset that and then you go again, you just repeat these steps again and again and again. Like we said, it's a very brief overview of the rules. If we missed anything out, if we clock something up, that's because it is a bit of a brain number. But that's basically, basically how you play the Maca. So what do we like about the Maca? So the first thing we like about this game is the fact that it's one, another one of those massive epic games and the theme is it's very, very original. It's, I mean, this game was designed by Karl Heinz uh, Schmiel, I think, in 1987, and it, it, it still hasn't lost any of its impact or any of its charm today. And it's one of those, especially if you play the seven round game as opposed to the five round game, it is one of those games that takes five hours, but you're, you're constantly, constantly, constantly involved in the game. And there are, there are occasions where your brain does sort of get a bit, it does switch off. So it's one of them games that it's, it's like an endurance test as well as a, a test of skill and, and, and card and card manipulation. So we love the fact that you are juggling all these factors in the present, but also keeping an eye on the future elections. Because if you throw all your resources into the, into the current election, you're gonna leave yourself short for the elections in the future so you can't you can't do everything you, you want to do at once so you've got to try and sort of juggle all these all these different factors you, you've got to try and control the media you've got to make sure you've got enough party meetings going on you've got to make sure that your trends are, are up you've got to make sure that you match 
not only the, the local public opinion, but you've got to make sure that you match the, the national opinion. And you've also got to watch your opponents because they'll be the first, like in real politics, they'll be the first ones to come along and stab you in the back and, and slag you off to the media as soon as they win that public opinion poll. So there's all these, all these varying factors you've got to concentrate on the now and in the future, and you've got to watch what your mates are doing either side of you. So another thing that we really like about this one, and it's, it, it, it turned out for us that this game is nowhere near as complex or daunting as, it, as we were led to believe. I mean, this, this game's got a reputation of being one of those really complex, untouchable beasts. And, you know, we, we've played it before. And it, it sat on our shelf and we dragged it out again because of the fourth edition. We thought, well, we'll have another look at Demaka. And it's this time around, it, was, it, was, it wasn't that bad. It was a little bit weird trying to get your head around the thing. But once you get the steps into your head, you're just repeating, so it's rinse, wash, repeat. So don't be afraid of Demaka. If, you, if you're worried, maybe you don't want to play this because you're thinking, oh, not for me, German elections can't be asked. It's not like that at all. It's, it's a very, very straightforward, simple game. And uh, yeah, don't be don't be disheartened or put off by people that say that it's, it's, it's too complex because it's not. It's, it's actually quite a straightforward game, and we love that about it. So what don't we like about Demaka? So the first thing, that we really, really don't like. And we don't know whether or not this has been rectified in the fourth edition, we're hoping it is. Because we'll, we don't really, we, we're not here to talk about the fourth edition. This is the third edition, the one that's available at the moment, and the one that's most readily available, I imagine, because the fourth edition's on Kickstarter. But the, we don't like the dice rolling in this, because, you know, like if you choose not to publish a poll, you're just gonna roll two dice, and then you're gonna get that many party members. And where that converts into income and points at the end of the game, that could decide the game. So if you if you win the, the poll auction real cheap and then you roll those dice and you get two threes, you're gonna increase your party membership maybe up to 18 points, you know, 18,000 euros. And that could be the difference between winning and losing at the, at the end of the game. So the fact that the game could hinge on a, a series of random die rolls, that's no good. So hopefully I've rectified that in the fourth edition. So another thing that we probably don't like about it, and it's it, if we had time, it wouldn't be a problem, but for us, we're never going to play the seven round game because it takes five hours, five plus hours. And if you're, if you're coming into this from having not played it ever, then you're not going to really sort of understand the nuances of, of the game in, on your first play, your second play, maybe even your third play, right? So you need, this is one of them games that you need to play multiple times and trying to get a five plus hour game to the table multiple times in a reasonable amount of time is probably impossible for us. It might be possible for you, but it's nigh on impossible for us to do so it's a shame we'd love to sit down and play the seven round game of Demaka, but we're sadly i don't think that's ever going to happen so another thing we don't like about this and we know this has been rectified in fourth edition and that's affecting the value games edition the poll cards are there there's no there's no public information on the poll cards so you're blind bidding on a card that you, you don't know what it does. And so whilst the lack of information on the poll cards may be exciting because you're taking sort of a blind punt, it, it, you need, I think you need to have at least some sort of a partial information on that. And I know they've rectified this because you, you've got you've got at least one of the uh, criteria on the poll card revealed in, in the new edition, but in the third edition, it, is, it doesn't give you any information. So you're completely blind bidding. So that's a, that's a bit of a downer, but uh, yeah, that, it still doesn't mean that the poll card auction isn't one of the most exciting parts of this game. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a 50-50 there. So to summarise, is Demaka still worth it? Is it still worth playing? Is it is it worth backing that Kickstarter? I think there's only a couple of days to go on it. But is it worth picking up the third edition or the fourth edition? We don't know much about the fourth edition, so is it still worth playing today? And we're gonna to have to say, yes, it's an in, this is without doubt an enduring classic. I mean, if you look at this and play it in terms of today's games, this still holds up. If this was released today, it'd still be a solid game. And I know there's a little bit of die rolling in this one, a little bit of a random element, and the fact that you it essentially, what it comes down to is a card matching game. So you're trying to match the cards that you've got in your hand and in your tableau to your local cards and the national cards. But you're also trying to manipulate your cubes on the board. Right? So, so this is one of the standout classic Euro games of all time. And the fact that the theme is very, very rare. I mean, what we, what we think about the other games, like it's a, uh, 1960 making of a president, that's about elections, but it's, it's not really the same game. So Demaka, 
it's it's a, it's a standout classic it's absolutely worth playing this one i mean the fact that this is getting a limited edition reprint is testament to the fact that this is a timeless classic and there are a few rules that should be ironed out in this version like we said the the blind bidding on the pole cards the random element when you're rolling dice to to increase the amount of party members you've got and also the fact this is just sort of a basically just kind of matching cards that you've got to some to other people and also those um pole cards can be quite devastating if you if you don't get hold of them yeah wholeheartedly recommend the maca it's not quite a five star game for those very reasons maybe the fourth edition is a five star game but we're going to give this four four stars i think we'll get, maybe four and a half stars it, it's a timeless classic it's still worth playing today and carl Heinz Schmiel, I think that's who, who made it. You've produced a Thomas classic that will never go away. It's going to continue to be reprinted again and again and again. So that's the Macca. That's the game of German elections. Sounds really boring, but it's actually one of the best games ever made. And um, yeah, like we said, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment about the Macca down below. Go and have a look at our playthrough for the tutorial and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time.